and welcome to Talk Art. I'm Sally Rain, and I will be your host as we delve into the world of the artist and the art that's all around us. Talk Art is sponsored by the Silicon Valley Open Studios. During the first three weekends in May, hundreds of local artists open our studios to the public. For more information, you can go to the website sbos.org. Our guest is Roxanne Jansen, and she is a photographer whose art reflects the beauty and diversity of nature and human life. Her photos show scenes of wildlife in motion and very interesting views on man-made structures. And she's here to talk about how she captures the beauty. So welcome, Roxanne. Well, thank you. It's nice to be here. Yes, it is. So tell us a little bit about how you got into photography. What interests you about taking a photograph? Well, I started taking travel photography when I was just 16 years old and mm -hmm. traveling around the Far East with my father and uh, the rest of the family. He was in the Navy. So we went to places like Thailand and Korea and uh, Philippines where I was born and mm -hmm. uh, other places. And uh, I tried to record. At first, I just tried to record the things that we saw. Mm -hmm. And then um, I realized how powerful a photo could actually be. One of the things that really turned my thinking around on photography was when I saw a baby elephant in Thailand mm -hmm. that was chained. Oh. And to me, it was the saddest looking little creature I'd ever seen. And there were people taking pictures of it, and they were studiously ignoring the chain. They were taking pictures of, his, of I assume it was a boy, I can't remember, his head, his ears, his trunk, and everything, and not the chain. Oh. And hmm. that was when I realized that photos tell a story and it's the story that the photographer wants to tell and so for me at that point I made a point of saying that I'm going to show the chain or I'm going to show the whole elephant or I'm not going to take the picture Aha, so, so more documentary in what is really there as opposed yeah, to just the beautiful shots right and and just a deeper reflection on what it is you want the viewer to see and after that, I went into uh, publications and such and worked in uh, technical documentation and analyzed other people's photos. Cool. And uh, then aerospace so and such, but learn? I was able to do this. I learned um, a lot on my own, mm -hmm. but in addition, I have learned in workshops all over the place. What I did is I learned online and stuff and read right. everything that I could, read the manuals and whatnot, read books. But I've taken workshops from some of the best people in the field. Oh, excellent. In the world. And so, for instance, when I felt that I was weak in portrait photography, I took a few workshops on portrait photography from some of the best in the world. So how did you find these people? How do you know who's the best? Well, some of them I found online, and it was just my personal opinion. It was some of them I found um, by looking at magazine covers and such. Mm -hmm. and looking until I found ones that had the most incredible lighting and, and really were dramatically better than the rest. Okay. And I looked up who it was. And then I've also done things like I've gone to the Palm Springs Photo Festival. What is that? Uh, it's a big yearly festival f held in Palm Springs, California. Um, you sign up in advance and they have uh, workshops there that you can take. Oh, nice. And in addition, you can have your, um, your work reviewed if you want by Oh, so you bring, a portfolio, you bring like a portfolio, you bring a portfolio. Yes. Oh, wow. It's it's very educational. It's sometimes humbling. Yes, of course. <laughs> and and there's also opportunity to have lunches and such with other photographers and people come from all over the world to this thing. Wow. So, so. you've been there. Yes. Yes. Excellent. And did you have your photos reviewed? Yes, I did. Wow. I did, did you learn anything in particular that like sparked your like next phase of photography? One of the things that they uh, told me was who to look at to continue to learn from. Oh. So they gave me names of some other photographers. They also uh, they also told me to try and put more people in my images. People in your images, okay. And, and it's funny because that's one thing that I had avoided in part because I was a blonde teenager in the Far East and I had my photo taken thousands of times oh, no. yeah. and I just never wanted to be that person who kind of invaded someone else's space 
without their permission. But I have now been able to do that with people's permission. I've branched out and um, have taken pictures of models and that kind of thing. And also I have many friends who are performing artists, uh, singers mostly. Oh. And sometimes they ask me to take photos of them and oh, nice. you know, so that they could have it on their website and such. So I, I do some of that. Excellent. So oh. tell us just a little bit about this camera before we get into your images. That's such an enormous piece of machinery there. It is. Uh, right now, this is my one of my favorite cameras. Um, it can do pretty much anything. <laughs> and it has lenses that, of course, can be removed. Right. So you can have um, a little bitty portrait lens on, or you can have a gigantic telephoto lens. Um, I love telephoto lenses when I'm doing nature, and that way I can take an image of uh, some creature in the woods without disturbing them. Right. Because that's my whole goal is to not be a pain. And, <laughs> and for instance, when you're doing whales and such, I want to never cross their path. And oh. otters, you can take better images, I think, of an otter from the land than you can from a boat. Oh, yeah. If you stay on land and you use a tripod and you use a giant telephoto lens, you can get some amazing images. So, yeah, this is, uh, one photographer told me, uh, buy the camera that scares you. <laughs> yes. And you'll get better at it. Okay, and yeah. and it's true. I Practice. bought this before I was ready for it. And I've, it, it can do many different things. So I've been enjoying it. So it must it. be very high resolution with a body that size. Yes. So this one, if I remember right, is 13 megapixels. Um, and then the other thing about it is that um, you can just control everything. Right. Right. So you can get it down to the nth degree of exactly what you want. It's a full format camera. And um, the previous one that I have that I'll also show today is a D. This is an FX camera, and that one's a DX camera. And so this one, uh, you could see a bigger image. Right. Yeah. Excellent. So. Well, let's take a look at some of the photos that you've taken of nature. Let's okay. see some of those. Ah, Flying Beauty. This is a great egret. And uh, this one I love because you can see the feathers. What I didn't realize before this, before uh, really looking at that, is that great egrets have the slightest bit of blue in their feathers. Um, this one I was able to get for two reasons. One, I had a, a nice telephoto lens on, um, and I sat there for literally hours waiting for this thing to take off. And because wow. I understand aerodynamics a little bit, I, I knew that it had to fly in a certain direction um, at that moment, because that's the way the air currents were going. Uh -huh. And patience and knowing that and having the camera set right paid off. So did you like take 100 photos of that and get the one, or did you take a few? Sometimes I take 100 and get the one, but on this one, I took two. Oh, uh, wow. Well, two of this one while it was flying. I, while I was waiting forever, I took some of it while it was just standing there. But wow. two while it was flying. And this one was exactly the one that I wanted. I, I, it doesn't always work out that way, no. but it was nice that it did. Ah, this one. This one was taken down in Southern California um, early in the morning, actually, which is how I was able to get that nice um, shadow on the water. Yeah, I like okay. the grays in that. And mm -hmm. how just the weight of the pelican pops out at the top. And again, with a high resolution camera, if you want, um, you can blow that up and you can see the eye of the pelican and all. That's the nice thing about the really high resolution cameras now. So you can zoom without zooming. Yes, <laughs> that's right. Now, this one is kind of funny. This is a loggerhead sea turtle. And I always take pictures of wildlife in the wild. But this particular one I actually took while it was in an aquarium. It was a rescued uh, turtle, and it was going to be released back to the wild, and I just had to get a shot of it. So I like the light on that, sort of from the top, but also from the side. Pretty yeah. nice. Yeah, it looks as though I lit that, cam that turtle. It does. And, <laughs> and I didn't use, I just waited until it turned in the right direction, frankly. Patience is yes. the main thing in photography. Planning and patience. Yeah, this is one of my favorite ones. I call this Dolphin Wow. Um, they're actually 
several dolphins in this shot, but the, the one in, in the front there is the most obvious. This is a Pacific white-sided dolphin. I'm not a marine biologist, but that's my understanding of what okay. it is. And they like to follow the boats. And so quite often you're able to see dolphins. I love them. I just love them. Now the, the thing that I wanted to show about this one is I put a little bit of black around the edge so that you could see that how you frame uh, an image makes a great difference in how the person sees it. If you were to frame this all in white, you know, white matting, right. a white frame, and put it on a white wall, you wouldn't really see the dolphin as well. You would see the blue of the water. But uh, having just a little bit of black around it, or a lot, helps you really see the, the gray in the dolphins really pops out. I can see that, and the white would kind of blend in with the white matting. Yes. Right? So do you mat with black then sometimes? Uh, some of my own I have matted with black, but my opinion has always been whoever buys my art should be able to mat it however they want. Exactly. And they're they're going to change it. Right. So I, I do the museum uh, type matting, and they can either use it or, or change it out. So, Ooh, yeah. beautiful. Yeah. Again, the dolphins like to follow the boat sometimes. Um, with a whale, it's up to you to stay out of their path. With a dolphin, you can almost never stay out of their path. <laughs> they just keep coming, and I love them. So sometimes they're coming all over the place. One of the hardest things, of course, is to get them in focus because they're going fast. Right. That and this is where um, almost every professional I have talked to, I have asked, do you uh, use the automatic um, focus? And 20 years ago when I asked them that question, they said, oh, of course not. I'm a professional. Almost everyone, if not everyone, that I've talked to in the last few years uses the automatic focus, and I think it's essential for the dolphins. You have to keep in mind that there are a few different types of automatic focus, so read the manual and use the right one for right. your camera. Yeah. And they're coming towards you, too, so yes. you would have to keep changing the focus, but that's really it. That yes. must have been a very fast exposure as well. Yes, and that one, I have to admit, that one was all automatic settings, I think. I think quite often I control the light, I control the ISO and, and all, but that one I think was all automatic. And here's a, a whale off Dana Point. Now again, not being a marine biologist, I'm not going to say what kind of whale that is, even though I think <laughs> it is, I know. Um, what can I say about, the, I just love whales. So uh, you do want to adjust your focus if you're looking down the length of a whale or whether it's going across your view because they're long enough animals you'll have one part of the whale in focus and the other part ah. not so learn how to how to adjust that on your camera now this one's in monterey bay whale breaching i love i just love being out on the water right. watching the whales and they have all different kinds of behavior and my goal is to get an image of every kind of behavior i've gotten most of them really like that oh, one. It's beautiful. Yeah, I, I like the way the horizon is just perfect with the whale there. Mm -hmm. Very nice. Thank you. So what I uh, wanted to show you. So you have some equipment a, for us. Yes, I do. So what did you bring? Well, what I brought, what I wanted to emphasize first is that if you can ever use a tripod, use the tripod because you will almost always get a better shot if the if the camera is on a tripod and you can even use the um, the remote release and that will get you the best shot of all but if you're out on a boat that's rocking and rolling and you can't use a tripod maybe it's a small boat or maybe you're just gonna lose your camera that way you can use this harness or another one like it there are different brands and different types and um, what you do with this is uh, here's another one of my cameras you take this little screw that's mm -hmm. on the bottom and so you like find the little screw hole where it would normally go into a tripod. And you just screw it in there. And why do you do that? Well, I have been on boats where people have been thrown left and right. Uh -huh. And you don't want to drop your camera over the edge of the boat. No, you don't. <laughs> Not so, with a lens like that. And what I have found is you don't know if the dolphin or the whale or whatever it is you're trying to shoot with a camera is going to come up right next to you. So you want one type of lens 
or whether it's going to be further away and you want a different type of lens. Uh -huh. So with this, I can um, take these straps off usually and I can have two cameras on me at the same time. And depending upon what one I want, something just pops up, I can use this one. I have them on and ready to go. Then the other one comes up, oh, they're further away, and I grab the other one. And that way you're able to use either one and, uh, and most importantly, not drop your cameras in the water. Exactly. The other thing, the other two things that I do if I'm out on the boat that way is, one, I always recommend, that because these cameras are heavy, that we use... Uh, personal flotation devices. And so if you oh. don't want to have a big old life jacket on, uh, they make things now where it's just a belt that can go around you. And the nice thing is um, you fall in or whatever, you can just pull on the strap and it, it helps you. It's just an extra aid. Oh, that's good. Safety first. Yes. And the other thing that I always have is my big yellow, it just happens to be waterproof jacket. So as the wave comes, I pay attention and I cover the jacket cover the cameras. There you go. Wave's gone. Take the pictures. Here comes the wave. And yeah, it's a lot of fun. So it sounds like you've been on many boat rides with yes. your cameras and you're experienced. Yeah. Well, years ago, I was a pool lifeguard. And uh, I've just been on boats a lot. And I love it. I love being on the ocean in any capacity. So uh, the other things that I have here to show briefly are, depending upon what uh, where you're taking your pictures, you might want to have different type of carrying cases. So if I'm just out and about and I just want to have a camera with me, oh, but not a big, up big deal. Yeah, I've got um, this one that can fit a camera and maybe an extra lens, maybe a wallet in it. Uh, this one is great if I'm out doing landscape photography. So I can uh, have all kinds of stuff in here. So it has compartments kind of for amazing. different lenses yes, and the camera. Yes, I've got uh, lenses. You've got the battery charger, which you don't need in the woods, but you know, all kinds of things in here. Anything that I need, extra batteries, extra memory cards, and uh, various lenses. And uh, the tripod folds up enough, and it just slides in this. Oh, nice. Part so you of it can slides just in this pack. Carry yeah. everything in the backpack. Yes. Very nice. The limiting factor is weight. I can't carry everything because <laughs> they're just too heavy. Here's one that I used to use. I've taken this on an airplane a couple of times. Um, I'm going to move this Is out it? of the way. I've taken this one on an airplane a couple of times, but the, it's a little too big for some aircraft now. The nice thing is, is that your uh, laptop fits in it because that's actually one of the most important things for a photographer these days is to be able to do that. Uh, use your laptop and the other things fit in here. This one is currently one of my favorites because I can fit everything in here that I need for a trip. Oh nice, look at that. So, and it's cushioned, it's all nice, and it has um, a pressure valve here. So as you're going up to altitude and all, it adjusts. So your cameras are protected, they're watertight, they're uh, controlled, the air pressure is controlled, and they are tough. Tough. So they come in different brands, different types. Excellent. So, well, let's take a look at some of the images that you've taken on your travels. Sounds good. Ah, uh, this one, three riders. Looks like it was taken a thousand years ago, but in reality, it was taken last year at the 950th anniversary of the Battle of Hastings in England. Wow. So that was, that's an amazing event. Because it was the 950th anniversary, they had uh, uh, the battle that took place in 1066. They had 1,066 people reenacting that wow. battle. It was amazing. I love the grays in that. That must have been just a beautiful photography day. It, it was, well, some people would have thought it was great and others didn't. For me, it was perfect because it was gray, it was overcast, and that's the mood that I wanted to convey. The, I focused in on the horse because I wanted the riders to kind of be a little blurred in the distance mm -hmm. of uh, history. And I've always been fascinated that you know, animals participated in history as much as the people did. Oh, yeah. The one thing I did in this photo is I took out the blue a little bit because there were just a, 
couple of little bits of blue poking through the clouds and they were distracting. Oh, how and did you do that? What did you use? Uh, that one I used a uh, software called Lightroom. Okay. There, there are several different kinds of software that you can use these days to manipulate however you want. So, this one, Eye on the Sword. Wow. Same thing. It was also taken at the uh, reenactment of the Battle of Hastings at 1066. This one I loved because the horse is looking at that sword. I thought that was yes. great. So, yeah. yeah. Well, I'm a Navy brat and I'm very patriotic. I, I just love flags and this one was framed so beautifully uh, right there at the base of the Golden Gate. And the Golden Gate Bridge, which is usually the focus of photographs yeah. is like off in the distance into the clouds. I really like that one. And the, the framing and you. the angles, that's thank beautiful. You. And that's something that I, I, I like to do is to, you have a, a very famous thing and realize that it's just part of our daily life. Other things are important as well, right next to it. Yeah. Yeah, this is the San Clemente Pier on Christmas morning. Christmas morning or Christmas Eve? Um, what can I say? There were people out there fishing already, even though the sun uh, wasn't quite up. So in this, are the blues in this one the way they were naturally, or did you also? Yes, this one I didn't manipulate at all. Oh. No. Yeah, again, I was a Navy brat, right? My dad was in the Navy. Uh, this one, you can barely see that there's a little kayak in so the front like on the right. And so they lined up exactly right for me. So... Um, and the men, the crew, I don't know if they're men and women or not, are all lined up because this was Fleet Week in San Francisco oh. Bay. This is down in Dana Point in Southern California. And again, it, it's a, um, an old ship, a tall ship. And uh, I like the texture of the barrel, the texture of the ship, and of course the cleat. Yep, so. very nice. Oh, this is different colors for you. Yes, it is. And uh, this this is in, I believe it was in Yuba City. Um, it's an old wagon, and I like the texture of the uh, leather, uh, the, the leather suspension on that, as well as, you know, the contrasting between the red and the brown and the gold. Yes, this is Florence, the Ponte Vecchio. And down in front, there's a waterman. This is one that I actually planned from the United States. Looked, um, looked on maps, looked on the web and everything else, and looked at what the angles of the sun would be and decided exactly where I wanted to stand before we went to Italy. The problem was there's no hotel there. <laughs> so <laughs> there's how did no you get that? There's no hostel there. There's nothing. Only private apartments. Well, I kept looking on the web, and I found an apartment that was for rent. Wow, because that's uh, not the usual view of the Ponte Vecchio. That's right. And I, I wanted like that. that where it comes up from the lower left on up. Um, Very nice. And and that line is heading then direct, directly to the Duomo. Mm -hmm. And so, wow. Yeah. yeah, again, half of photography is planning, 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 planning. And that's, this is in Teatro La Fenice, the uh, Venice Opera House. And Many photographers, when they try and shoot this, they try to take out the curves. And I understand, but to me, the curves are what make it beautiful. Right. So I call this one curvaceous. I like you often have a very strong, like, central line that draws yes. your attention into your photos. I yes. like that. Like the dolphin was one, the whales, this line. Even though it's a curve, yeah. it's beautiful. Very nice work. Thank you. Yeah, I have to admit, I was emotional taking that one. Um, I don't know if I told you this, but after talking to the people who uh, who worked there for quite a while, um, they let me come down and sing. Oh, wow. I, I sing with a symphony here in California, and uh, and they, they just let me come down and sing. It was a very memorable experience. Never thought I'd be able to sing in the Venice Opera House, even just for fun. Uh, this one is also Venice. And the amazing thing about this, everyone thinks that those colors are completely fake. And they're not. I've touched up wow. a slight bit, and I'll tell you exactly what things I touched up. The, the thing that made this 
image what it is, is that the sun had gone down behind the buildings that are in front. Right. So that it was shining exactly where I wanted the, the eye to focus, which is on the left in the center at those other buildings. And that meant that the buildings in the front right were in shadow. So after I got this home on the computer, I lifted the shadows on it. I took out a dust spot. I took out um, a seagull that looked just like dirt because it was so small. Mm -hmm. And I made the um, red come up just slightly because those awnings just looked dusty. And I think that's all that I did wow. to this. So the green in the water was as green. Yes. Wow. Yes, the green Beautiful. was as green. And most important to me, that little bit of aqua look that's right up, right in the center left yeah. was really what was in the sky. Wow. It, the, the clouds really cooperated that day. That was amazing. That's beautiful. <laughs> well, your work is spectacular. And Thank I you. really like the your framing is all very interesting. I mean, that's what struck me when I saw your work is that the animals are beautiful, but the framing of the buildings is really interesting. You have a very nice eye. Thank you. So where can people see your work? Right now, they can find it on my website. OK. Um, I think that's been posted up there. Mm -hmm. It's roxanejansen.com. And uh, I'm going to try to be doing more shows and such. I am on other places on the web, but the main place to see me is on roxanejansen.com. Great. And so do you have any future plans coming up? Just briefly tell us, do you have a travel agenda coming up? or I have a couple of trips in mind. Um, I'm, I haven't made the reservations. I'm still trying to decide <laughs> between yep. two places, and I just have to do it. In addition, what I hope to do is um, get more images of singers and animals. I mean, and I have to be out on the water. Right. So. so. Boats, yeah. here we come. Well, thank yes. you so much for being on Talk Art. This has been very thank you interesting. Thank you for having me. It's been You're fun. You're welcome. Yes, thank you. and thank you for watching. Yes.